hopefully everybody can um, <clears throat> share information or if you have a question of somebody, you can do it through the chat box as well. Okay, I think what, what we're gonna do today, if you can, you can see the agenda is up, we've got, whoop, it left us. Uh, Jenny's running the, uh, the agenda for us, so, uh, or the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, we're gonna do uh, some teacher showcases and then have some discussion time. And then of course, we're gonna go into the post-secondary and, and then uh, share some additional resources towards the end that we have on the TSLP website. And hopefully uh, today, if not today, then by tomorrow, we will have our Catch the Wave video. Uh, it's, you know, typically we host several Catch the Wave events throughout the state in the spring of the year. And of course, this year we weren't able to do that. So we put together a little video. It's just probably going to be right around an hour and maybe two hours long. But you can look at them in sections, um, the different pieces, all the way from talking to disability services folks, students are on there that have experience going to post-secondary and uh, use disability services, uh, financial aid information, uh, voc rehab counselors are on. And uh, anyway, we, we also have a section on Dakota Link and, and assistive technology devices that are available. So those, that'll be up posted on our website and you can go to that and share it with your students. And uh, we'll be sending an email out in regard to some maybe ideas that you can share with your students if they uh, watch the Catch the Way video. Um, maybe some points that they can share with you to prove that they actually watched it. And uh, maybe some information gathering that they can get while they watch the video. Uh, with that, I am gonna turn it over to Bev, and you can take off, Bev. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. Um, so we have a, a few questions or a couple questions posed here um, for you. Uh, the first one, as you can see here, is what resources or strategies have you found to be helpful in providing instruction um, with your distance learning? Um, and again, the reason we started this roundup initially was to give you guys an opportunity to to talk to share to ask questions so um, ponder this question and in the meantime we are going to have a couple people who um, during our last roundup you know put information in the chat box about some things that they're that they're doing that they feel have have worked well so we're going to ask those teachers to tell you a little bit about what they've done um, and then we want to open it up or I'd like to open it up and if you guys have if anyone has any other information um, about things that you have done that have seemed to work well for you please share if you don't feel comfortable um, unmuting and, and telling us verbally um, please put into the chat box because that's how we that's how we learn so um, and I just want to say it's great to see everybody again I'm so glad we had this opportunity to get connect one more time um, before school's out I think this will probably be the last time since some schools are going to be closing actually pretty quickly within the next um, couple weeks so anyway it's great to um, see all of you guys again so uh, with this first um, question about strategies that you use that you thought have been helpful um, I'd like to have Nicole Nelson and Jody Carlsgard who are with the South Dakota School for the Blind and Visually Impaired, they had put in the chat box during our first roundup something that they've done. And so we're gonna ask them to explain that a little bit. First mistake, I'm muted. <laughs> okay. um, I'm from the School for the Blind. Um, I'm the transition specialist there and with the coronavirus and everything going on, um, our teachers thought it would be a fun um, idea to have or a fun activity for our students um, to still be engaged while they're at home doing an ECC bingo. Um, I don't know if many of you are familiar with our school. We do have a residential program. So we have 13 residential students and about nine day students. So when they're at school, they're really in a routine. So now being home is really different for them. Um, so this is a good way for them to still practice and work on the skills and goals that they need to be working on. <clears throat> and then 
for those of you that aren't um, familiar with the ECC, it's our expanded core curriculum. Um, and that's basically designed for um, those with, uh, that are blind or have a visual impairment. Um, there's nine different areas of that. And some of the areas, um, I'll just name a few, would be like braille, orientation and mobility, um, assistive tech, compensatory skills, just different things like that. Um, so for the bingo, um, we have different activities listed. Um, so students will complete 10 activities um, in order to score two bingos, and then they can just mark them off as they go. Um, and then once they've achieved the bingos, they can either mail in their bingo card um, or email it to um, Jody or our school counselor, each one. Um, so our deadline for that is May 20th, which is our last week of school. I think we're going later than everyone. Um, and then from that, they'll choose three winners. Um, there was an anonymous donor that gave um, three, or an anonymous donor donated the prizes. So we have three $20 gift cards to Walmart that they can win. Um, and I was talking to a teacher the other day and she said that one of her students, um, her student's mom was really pleased with this. She thought it was a good incentive um, for her daughter to do some of her ADL skills at home. So there's been a lot of positive feedback with that. Um, I don't know, Jody. did you have anything you wanted to mention or add to that? Um, I was just gonna say, I didn't know, is it possible for me to share my screen or not? Cause um, I, I think Jenny just shared the bingo card. Yeah, okay. I just, yeah, I just shared the bingo card, but if you wanna share your screen and talk more about it, I can well, stop sharing. The only okay? thing, I was just gonna go maybe in into um, what expanded curriculum is. And I know that we generally state that it's a curriculum for students or people that have a vision impairment. Um, but really, when you look at it and visit it, uh, it can be used for any student, um, uh, basically in their lives. So I don't know, can, can I try yeah. it? If I yeah, could yes, my... go ahead. And I think really like this is just, you know, just an example, but you could really make that for anything like, you know, we could focus it more to transition students or, you know, yeah. it really could be geared toward anything, but it's so, worked well for us so far. Did this come up okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, right. And, and what it says, children with vision impairments, including deaf blindness, it just gives you some descriptions of what those areas would be. Like we take it, uh, our vision incident, well, we just make a quick glance and look around and we know exactly what, you know, is happening or students know what's going on in their environment. Um, but there's nine areas and we kind of, this is what we really hone in on all extended school year and during the school. So your school district may not have a, um, orientation mobility instructor, like a specialist. These are a master's degree um, and they have a, a lot of, uh, this is a huge liability um, position because of teaching your students to confidently walk across streets, walk up and down the street or um, sidewalks, um, in, uh, manipulate their environment and buy groceries. But these are the nine areas that we focus on and not just the point of it too is that they're not individually taught. Um, as you can see, you need some social skills when you're wrecking leisure. So they cross curricular here. Even if you're in the English class, you know, there's a lot of things that you can um, be doing here in this expanded core curriculum to incorporate and to focus on or remind or teach. And then here's some other ones, of course, your assistive technology, career, self-determination. So um, these are the nine areas uh, we kind of hone in on and focus on. And I think the biggest thing is that it's done in all their environments. They're not separately taught. Um, we just have this separate curriculum so that we know and we're aware of that these extra um, lessons need to be taught. I don't know if anybody has any questions about them. You know, I think it's nice too, whether they are at school or are at home, they know that there's skills that, you know, they're going to be using lifelong. 
whether it's making their bed or learning to clean a room or, you know, and that also ties into their employment skills. Right. Miss Robin Clark, um, we've had her as a speaker and she is fabulous. She's fantastic. And, um, and she will point out too, this isn't just for, this curriculum's not just for students who are blind, visually impaired. You can use it for all kids and maybe some adults too. I don't know. <laughs> so. Great. Does anyone have any questions for um, Nicole or Jody about this? So is you purchased, yeah. is this, this is a purchased curriculum? No, no, not net, no. Um, the, across, they're called, it's called Councils of Schools for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And um, this was developed, um, I can't think of his first name, but Hack, his last name was Hack, Mr. Hack, evaluated in and found out that there was something missing in um, students' lives who were blind and visually impaired because they're missing the incidentals that we take kind of for granted. So once he did some baseline and some visiting and observations, he was realizing these were these nine areas were um, so important to teach because. These are things that um, happen and um, they weren't picking it up because they weren't seeing, seeing these areas um, happen. Okay. So it's typically not an expense unless you do find, you know, unless you do find something out there that costs. But um, the American Printing House, they do have a data collecting um, binder, but Typically, the schools for the blind across the nation get that for free because of quota funds, but I'm sure it'd be available for purchase if you need it. But APHs, they have different um, checklists you can get. Okay, okay. Did, hey, was somebody trying to ask a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was. this is Dan. Oh. I was just gonna share that um, Whitley Hubrock Hubrock had put a comment in that they used the bingo game and it was working really well for them. So they were thinking, they got gift cards from Dairy Queen, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, B&G, Milky Way, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. And then Chris Dunn asked if the kids have to submit pictures of doing these activities or do just do it on their honor, which I think is a good question. Hey, you're just having them do that on their honor, right? Yeah, I think yeah. that's what we're doing is that um, the parent has to initial and send back to us. Cool. But I know like our PE teacher did some sort of thing, it was called Pioneers. And um, like for her, she did, well, she, I don't think she was giving a prize, but um, she um, encouraged students to video or take pictures and send to her. Great idea, great. Um, Okay, well, I'm going to move on to um, have Cindy Bierman tell us a little bit more about uh, this uh, checklist, checklist of activities that you had mentioned or put in the chat box last time, Cindy. And when Cindy's done, then we'll open it up. If anybody has any other um, ideas or suggestions or questions, feel free to let us know. Go ahead, Cindy. All right. Hi, I'm Cindy Bierman. I teach in a resource room. Uh, it's pretty much self-contained. I have six different classes that I teach. We have one called the coffee shop, which we started last year. Uh, our school opened a coffee shop and um, my kids are allowed to come in and help stock the shelves and they get to take orders and they learn about customer service, that type of thing. And they also, I divide the class in half because I have 13 kids. So half of them go to the coffee shop and work and the other half goes down to the kitchen and they do things like put together sandwiches and put cookies on pans that type of thing. Um, I also teach math, English, social science, employability, and transitions. Well, when we went to, to e-learning, it's hard to um, come up with things for transitions, employability, and coffee shop. And so I developed this uh, two or three page paper in which they get to uh, check every day that they do these things. So as you can see at the top, I have dates on, so every week they get a new one from me. And then they check it off, what they've done, and which day they did it. 
and I ask them to send me pictures. I always encourage them to send me pictures of them doing things. So I've got pictures of kids making spaghetti or uh, drawing an art picture, or I've got, uh, they turn in their cards. If they make a card for a, a fireman, policeman, nurses, a nursing home, they turn those into me then every week. And then I take them over to the fire department or the hospital or wherever they need to go. I also added on the bottom, how many times did you wash your hands? Just to remind them that they need to do that every day and they should do it often. <coughs> I, the other thing I'm going to do that I wanted to mention is I have uh, thank you cards that I'm sending out to all the moms next week. And inside the cards, I've got a coffee gift card for them. It's gonna be a Mother's Day because it's, I don't mean to be, uh, sexist but it's usually the mom that has to take over the teaching and stuff and I thought that I should let them know that I appreciate what they're doing and that I know it's not easy to homeschool your child especially a special needs child any questions for me or anything okay great thank you I, I believe there's um, been a question or a couple of questions in the chat box about will you guys be will, ladies be willing to share the bingo cards that you've talked about that would be great um, everything can you guys hear me everything will be on um, well is on our website right now so if you go to our home page and there's a box that says transition roundup and you click on it and it'll take you right to everything we're talking about today and I saved this, like I saved this one as a, in a Word document so you can edit it as it fits your classrooms. So these documents that we're sharing, like this one we're looking at right now, is on there, you're saying? Yep. Yeah, it's on there right now. Okay, great. Um, would, it, does anyone else have anything they'd like to um, share about something that you have done or put together? Um, maybe even if you don't think it's that great, but hey, it's something there. I know that there's teachers out there struggling to come up with just ideas um, for activities to engage their students. Hey, Beth. Uh, yes. This is Kristen. Yes, Kristen. Um, I, if I can share my screen, I was just going to show you guys an employability thing that um, me and my student teacher made up. Okay. Um, let me see if I can share it. I'm sorry. Chris is with Harrisburg District. So we have a Google slide that goes home every week to all the kids. And um, so it has the assignments for every week on there. And the Zoom meetings, um, sorry, it's loading. Um, so when we came down to like this week, it says employability choice board. And so here's our choice board that we did. And it's like, you can either narrow down a career, budget your life, find housing or meal planning and grocery shopping. So that was one thing that we did for employability skills. Um, when I've gotten to like elapsed time, I've made like a choice board here with a bunch of links where they have to go on and do it, the activities and then send me a screenshot of their scores. And I've also done one with counting money and telling time too. But those are just different choice boards that we've made. And I know the employability one, it's kind of hard what to do right now. So that's right. one that we've done. Yeah, nice. If you'd like to share it with us, um, maybe send one of us an email to us and we can, if you'd like to put it up on our website as a resource. Sounds good. Bev, can I just share it to you then? Sure. You bet. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else have anything they would want to share with the rest of the group? I can share my stuff if you want, Bev. Okay. You're, you're coming up next. Oh, Wait, okay. After? Yeah. You're coming up next. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I have something I can share, Bev. Okay. Okay. I'm going to screen share. Who's, who's talking is, right now? This is Dana White from Baltic. Oh, Dana. Hi, Dana. Hi, how are you? Good. Okay, can everybody see my screen? 
I see a one-eyed green monster. Yes. Well, okay. I'm actually doing mentoring program, and um, this template came from my second year teacher. She managed to find these cool little graphics and put this together, shared the template with me, and I have one student who has um, self-contained and so a lot of specialized instruction. And so I do one PowerPoint each week, and then it goes home with a log, and we ask for either just them to document how the activities went, and um, uh, that's basically it. So then there's one activity per area that where we serve. And so then I'm just gonna run through the slides really quick to show you. This is actually the first week and I, um, I recorded a video and embedded it in here. It's about 30 seconds. Do you guys wanna see it or should we just move on? <laughs> wanna see it? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Let's do it. All right. Hi, Matt. It's me, Miss White. How are you? Good. Me too. Well, I'm sorry. I. Okay, so that's enough of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then it's just basically kind of walking through. Um, I have them color coded related services green blue for educational so if it's a green slide it's a related service and these are the tips that we are basically working on there's some personalized information in there um, the visual picture recipe book goes home these are the vocabulary terms we're working on and then we have um, videos to reinforce those I threw the Pledge of Allegiance in there for him <laughs> That's cool. um, you know, so basically trying to keep it organized and then asking parents to provide some kind of visuals as well as the, the log back just to, so that's worked pretty well. Wow, cool. So the parents are, are responding, sending something in? Yes, yes. They send the logs back and then he has an older sister who um, also will send some pictures through email sometimes too. So that's fun to see the pictures. Very good. Thank you for sharing. I'm impressed. You guys are doing a great job. Any anyone else um, have any? I can share, but I can't upload my computer stuff because I had to do join on my phone. It wouldn't let me on our computers because not we don't have Zoom on our computers. So, okay. um, but yeah, some of the things I'm doing, um, I'm having my kids do virtual college tours. I have more SLD and ED kids, and so they have to. Um, some of my kids are doing some virtual. Um, college tours. I have another student that we went online and there is an NBA job video and there's some questions. I personalize the questions to them because they're totally interested in sports and so it explores all the jobs that have to do with NBA and so there's like all kinds of like digital jobs and stuff and my kids are more are higher functioning this year and so those are more appropriate for higher functioning kids. And then we, I also had another student I found, um, they're working on um, filling out employment applications. And I did find in Minnesota, it's for ex-convicts. And I said, ha, 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 you're not an ex-convict. <laughs> but it's, it's a free, it doesn't save your information, but you can save the document you create, but it's a digital form to practice doing um, job applications. Oh. Okay. So that kind of goes with my kids, what, what they're doing for uh, either career exploration or if they're doing job applications for their transition stuff. So and if you want to send your transition liaison the links and then we can share it with everyone else on our website. Okay. That was really neat. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, I just realized I'm, I could listen to this all day, but we do have a few more slides to go. So I better, <laughs> I better turn it over to um, a Dave, I think has got the next one. Thank Thanks, you Bill. for sharing everyone. Yes, lot, lots of great information. And let's see, I guess I have another question for you to ponder or think about. And, and I think a lot of people have already been doing this, but uh, you know, just to talk a little bit about how you're providing services and, and that's great information for, uh, for sharing. Uh, let's see, I guess the next thing I'd like to do would be to um, ask Katie Pudwell to talk just a little bit about if you gave some background on your program and your students and, and then jump in with some of your virtual tools, that would be great, Katie. 
Sure. Um, I am a teacher at Pathways to Life, which is a specialty school at LifeScape. And we are tra a transition only program. So the, the cool thing is we get to focus on all those pre-employment transition services. Um, we have been doing distance learning since the third week of May. Um, and I'm kind of getting the hang of it now, I think. I our, Most of our students um, range from uh, moderate to severe disabilities. We have a lot of students who have multiple disabilities. So a really wide range of um, strengths and needs amongst students. But we are utilizing, I don't know if you can pull up yes. what I sent in or I can share. Um, which way, I have either or, it doesn't matter. Would you like to control it? Yeah, go, go ahead and throw something on the screen and I'll tell you what it is. Okay. Um. Um, we have a classroom Facebook group that uh, we have 35 students total and most of our students participate in that group. We post a video every day doing our morning opening so our students have that routine. Um, and that's I think probably one of the, that in our Zoom meetings are probably the biggest benefits to students. Um, but this is this is an example. I use unique learning systems transition band. So it, it kind of checks all the boxes on the um, pre employment skills. Uh, but this, this is an example. What I do is I, I make up a lesson plan grid and I record a video lesson of me teaching the unique learning system um, lesson onto YouTube and I have a grid that shows suggested weeks, there's my grid there. So my first lesson is in May is a story called The Big Move and there aren't any activities to go with it, but students have the option of logging in, they have a student login and the book is interactive and reads aloud. Um, but you can see in the center column, I've got materials and activities and the choosing a place to live, self-assessment. And then I think there's another uh, roommate problem activity that goes with that. So I, I model in my videos how to complete the activity and students have the materials to complete the activity at home or on their Chromebook or iPad. Um, the cool thing, and then in addition to our video lessons, we have, which are on YouTube, um, I haven't personally, we don't, I don't have a lot of views, I'm gonna say. So students aren't necessarily engaged with those YouTube lessons, so we've been doing Zoom afternoons every Tuesday and Thursday, and we have invited guest speakers related to our unit. So uh, the month of April was employment, so we had several guest speakers from different career fields talk about their employment. Um, and then in May, we have several uh, self-advocates coming to talk about how they decided where to live. And let's really enjoy the Zoom sessions um, we, and like I said, we have quite a mix. We have some students who don't speak at all, some students who sign, or, um, and then some students who read and write and can tell you their whole life story. So, uh, but they, they all participate in the same Zoom and we, we work really hard on establishing expectations as a group first. And now we have guest speakers um, twice a week, every week, and they're a lot of fun. So I get, also send out individualized packets with IEP objectives specific to the students, but this is just our general curriculum. So Katie, that is all I've got. Okay, super. Any questions for Katie or if you don't want to speak up, if you want to put things in the chat box, that would be great. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up, and, and I think that she's still at her IEP meeting. We have uh, Lori Waylander. She's the Special Education Director in Huron, and, and she has some um, tools or a tool that she uses to document uh, progress and, and services that are being provided to students um, at this time. And Lori, are you out there? I don't think she is, Jenny, but uh, would you have her spreadsheet? Would you be able to bring that up for us? Spreadsheet. 
Laura, you may not have that. Dan, I know, does have that. This is Cindy. Yeah, oh, I don't, okay. I don't think I have that. Can you share your screen with Dan and I can talk about it? Um, yeah, I can. I don't have, I, can, I couldn't get back into internet with my, okay. my uh, outlook. <laughs> well, that's okay. This is Cindy and Larry, Lori had um, shared it with us shortly after the last teacher roundup. It is, and we will have it on our website then, but it's just a spreadsheet which I'm sure a lot of you maybe have done already, but a separate page for each student with the different goals that they're working on during this distance learning time and the progress. And just a really good method, easy to follow way of keeping track and documenting everything that's going on. Um, I know there was a special ed law webinar yesterday and I just, wasn't able to jump on, but I the first slide that I saw and the only slide I saw was all about documentation. And, you know, IDA wasn't built for COVID style, but the law is still the law. So make sure that what you're doing, you're documenting, you're documenting. So we will have that along with the other resources on the web page. Thank you, Cindy, for uh pinch hitting and uh, I think with that I'd like to turn things back to Bev. Okay and actually I'm gonna probably turn it over to <laughs> um, we have Karen I think uh, Dan mentioned at the beginning we have Karen Geardy with us who's the director of disability services at USD and um, I'm just gonna ask her to say a few words about about catch the wave um, the you know, the events we have and now this video that we put together and why we did that, um, why we feel it is so important. So Karen, I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right, thanks Bev. Um, I just have to say, I've, I've always been uh, amazed and impressed by the special educators in South Dakota. <laughs> and that continues now. Um, hearing what you guys are doing for the students is just, incredible but it, it's not surprising at all to me that you guys would jump in and and just get at it so that's awesome hearing some really cool stuff today um yeah i'm pretty bummed <laughs> as probably a lot of you are that that we're not able to have the catch the wave events this year that's uh, i was telling bev just the other day that's uh one of my favorite things i just love the opportunity to get to meet the up and coming students and some of the students that might come through my door eventually um, as they look through, look at college and uh, I'm just a huge believer in just um, giving students an opportunity to see what their potential might be rather than you know capping that potential at least just let them know what's out there and what the possibilities are um, and I think a lot of the anxiety that uh, students experience when they're looking at college is, is uh, some of it anyway is just grounded in not knowing what's going to happen I think for, for any student, that's, that's a lot of the anxiety, but for students with disabilities, there's just another layer there because, um, you know, you guys have taken great care of them for 12 years now, 13 years now, maybe 20, 21 years, and then all of a sudden they're, they're looking at a world where they're not sure whether they'll get a lot of support from people. So I think the Catch the Wave events and then uh, uh, youth leadership forum as well, but the catch the wave since that focuses mainly on post-secondary um, situations and possibilities. It's it's just such a cool thing. So um, I was excited when when uh, Dan and Bev and Cindy asked me about participating in this uh, video series they're, they've put together um, that that covers those topics that we normally cover at catch the wave. So I think it'll be an opportunity for a lot of you to see um, who we are, who the different directors are at the different schools throughout the state, the different post-secondary schools, and to hear from some students that have gone through disability services and used our services um, and have been successful, have graduated or are currently in school. And then I, I think there'll be some people on there too that are um, adults with disabilities who have, have graduated high school and have, have and college and have gone on to just life and uh, there's, I, I think there'll be some really good information on there. So 
I, I'm excited to see the video series. Other than the part where I have to look at myself talking, I'm excited <laughs> to see that series. Yeah, exactly. Um, Karen, do you have any advice for teachers who have seniors, current seniors in their class who, you know, are are saying or playing and going on to post-secondary? Well, I think somebody mentioned, I can't remember who it was, mentioned uh, doing virtual tours of colleges. I think that's really cool. Um, you're probably doing that even with your sophomores and juniors, maybe if 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 they'll if they'll do it. <laughs> um, but I think doing the virtual tours, um, you know, if you've got IEPs coming up and you've got a student who's interested in a col the college atmosphere, maybe reach out to the uh, a post secondary disability services person and see if we can attend your your student's IEP meeting by Zoom. If we can join in, you know, we love to go to those meetings. When when we can in person, you know, when we're all working as usual, and uh, we'd love to do it by Zoom too. So we could just sit in for the whole meeting, or you could invite us in for 10, 15 minutes to answer questions um, specific to that student. Um, we'd be glad to do, do that. I'm speaking just for myself, but from what I know about my colleagues, about the other people that do post-secondary disability services, I, I think they'd be glad to participate too. So. We just all love students. I mean, that sounds corny, <laughs> um, but it's true. We love the students we work with, and we always look forward to seeing the students that are coming um, our way in the future. So we'd love to participate in that way. Great, great. And it makes me think of, um, I don't know if it was last time on this, uh, that somebody mentioned having guest speakers. Oh, well, I think Katie mentioned it today again, having guest speakers in on, via Zoom, you know, right now with students. Is that something they, somebody would be able to contact you and say, hey, could we have you join us via Zoom for 10 minutes to sure. talk to students? Yeah, I'd love to do that. That'd be fun. And once again, I think other people in my position would, would love to do that too. So if you've got a, uh, you know, if you're on the other side of the state or if you're up in Aberdeen, you know, uh, you could contact Doris up there, but uh, I'd be glad to join in anywhere. Right. That'd be fun. And I think you're right. I think any of the other disability coordinators I know would be more than happy to do that as well. So keep that in mind too. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, Karen. Bev, this is Cindy. Um, I just wanted to mention on our website, also tslp.org, we have a document of the names, addresses, his emails, phone numbers of the disability coordinators throughout the state. You know, some of the names may have changed recently, but the phone numbers are still the same. And then also on our website under Catch the Wave is a really nice little video that we had put together a few years ago with various disability coordinators talking about different aspects of going to college. That's really cool. Right. All of those things are on our site. Okay, um, I am going to turn it over to, I think, Jenny, Jenny and Cindy to share some more information. Go ahead, Cindy, you can go first. So I am going to just bring up my page, right? Oh, I, I'm controlling it, so I think I would have to. Okay. I'd have to okay. stop here. All right, sorry about that. No, you're okay. Um, after listening to all you guys a couple of weeks ago, and then today, it's like, I think TSLP needs to have their own live binder. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with what that is, but Jenny, can you click on live binder? Yes, I am pulling it up. I had really never heard about these till about a week ago, but Sorry, that's not DCDT. The right one. Sorry, I'm working, <laughs> trying to find okay. the right. Um, DCDT, okay. which stands for Division of Career Development Transition, and it's a branch of CEC, Council for Exceptional Children, has been having numerous um, town halls, webinars, Zoom meetings, for educators across the nation, and they have put together a live binder of, here it is, 
all these multitude of resources. Just stay up at the color top, Jenny. All of these little boxes are links to various websites, curriculums, activities that have been shared on their town, um, town forums or whatever they've been having. Um, I think we could probably do one like this just on our website with all the resources you guys have. But I just wanted to share a few. So down below, there's a table of contents listed where Jenny was going. But you have your option of either clicking in the boxes for the different resources or going through the table of contents. But Jenny, if you would go up to the third row, just skills to pay the bills, which is the second one from, yep, click on there. Not sure if a lot of you are probably familiar with this, but this is an excellent resources for teacher and students of activities and lessons for students to do to gain skills to find employment. There's videos and everything that go along with it. You can go back, Jenny. I just wanted to highlight a few. Oops. Should I go back too far? I think you went back too far. Yep. I'll just click on it. There. There we go. We're back. Sorry. <laughs> on the bottom row, there's a couple of cool things. The clear videos on Google Drive. It's what it is is it has all the different job clusters listed with different worksheets. And if you could just click on any one of those. So it's a worksheet maybe dealing with education or this is health scientists science and it has a little different um, careers within that listed. And if you click on one of those, Jenny, it takes you to a YouTube video, short YouTube videos about a dental assistant that the student can watch. And then the remainder of the worksheet is different questions um, about that career. So it just, and it has multitude numbers of um, Sorry. worksheets. There you go. Also on that bottom page, um, on the bottom, on the bottom row is schools of strength. Oh, it's not, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. On the right side of the fifth row. Sixth row. There. Special Olympians aren't going to be able to do any of their events this summer. This is a training program put out by them in a WWE um, superstar on different levels of videos and exercises that they can do. Superstar champion master tells them what to bring. It also has a little fitness tracker here where they can download it and keep track. And then there's three videos that the students can follow and go and exercise with. And if you click on one of the videos just for a minute, it gives you kind of a flavor of them and they're kind of. And then there's a coach handbook and also a guardian or caretaker handbook at the bottom. I just thought that was kind of a cool thing to do. And there's lots and lots of on um, resources on there. There's also a spot on there where if you have something to share, you can go on there. I think it's five on five transition or something. You can go on and share your transition resources on there. Um, if you like to do jigsaw puzzles, there's a spot on there where you can download a 
various jigsaw puzzles into them. But there was one site that I wanted to share with you, um, and that's called Explore World. There it is. Um, Explore World was developed by WinTech. WinTech is the Workforce Innovation Technical Assistance Center, and that's kind of like BR's Technical Assistance Center for Transition, or the WIOA. But Explore Work is a program online that has six different modules that a student can work through. So you can keep scrolling down, Jenny. You can just keep going. Here's the different topics from career planning to self-advocacy, um, workplace readiness. But if you click on one of those, Jenny. This one. Yep. There, within there, there's like four to five separate lessons. Uh, lessons. You can scroll down some more. Or learning activities, they call them. And each learning activity has, um, different activities, different videos. And then they always have an activity there that they have to complete and send to themselves. And then also they can submit and send it to their teacher. Um, I was doing one this afternoon and I saved it for myself, but I don't know, Bev, if you got it or not, but I sent it to you also. So a way I of- I did, I did, I received it right to before. <laughs> yeah on how they're doing. And so after each module, like this work experience one, they get a little, oh, not a certificate, but a little whatever, clap, hand clap or um, praise for completing that. And then when they're done with all five of those modules, they get a really nice certificate that gets sent to them along um, to the teachers. So I just thought it was such a nice, easy way for a student to go through the program and yet the teacher still keep accountability on them. So that was all I had for those two things. Okay. Um, I'll talk about um, podcast resources. Um, if you were on the Thai conference, um, I uh, attended a session with Kristen Mulder. I have the link here. Um, it was very um, excellent. She had a lot of resources um, using podcasts and how even students can create their own audio file. Um, she did a lot with Google Slides. So I saw some teachers that have shared here were using Google Slides. So she shows how to use podcasts in Google Slides. So I really recommend um, listening to it. They put their Thai conference, if you didn't have a uh, chance to see it, um, attend it virtually, they put all their um, sessions up on YouTube um, and have their sessions available, but I thought the podcast was really neat. Um, and I'm going to take you through some of the resources, um, websites that I found was would be neat for um, special ed students. Um, this one, um, Leela Kids for School, they have a bunch of spooky stories, audio books, interviews um, and all different grade levels. Um, like I put one in here for, you know, money. And a bunch of podcasts popped up on how to save money, um, digital money, safe money. Uh, I just, I did disability and I found an interview with the, um, an interview with Haven German, the first deaf blind graduate from Harvard Law School and why you should embrace our differences. Um, so, and there's a bunch of other subjects too here as well that could benefit students. Um, instead of, you know, watching something they can, or if they're, if they're listening to something, they can use their Im imaginations more. Um, I also, 
podcast. Let's go back. Um, TED Talks also, they have podcasts as well. And if you go to topics, there's a whole bunch of topics too also as well. Um, they have one, one just for people with disabilities. And there's some really cool videos in here too as well um, on how people are breaking bar barriers in the disability field. So um, some, in, you know, most of them are just speaking so they could just be audio files as well. Not necessarily, they don't always have to watch them. And then lastly, And NPR, they have podcasts, and I have the educational ones pulled up for right now. If you go to categories, there's a lot of other different categories you can use. And I found this TBH one, which I believe in kid lingo is to be honest, <laughs> if I'm correct. <laughs> um, but it's made by students for teenagers. Um, and you can just hit, in all these, you can just hit list, listen. There's no signing up. There's no apps you have to download. It's just you can send them the link, and then all they have to do is press listen. So I just wanted ones that were easy to access, no, no downloading apps or logins. So this one's high schoolers cope with the coronavirus shutdown. So it's a high schoolers take on what they're doing, what happened and how they're handling it. So it's another way for them to connect even through podcasts to other high schoolers. A question to understand rap from Magic City to Toxic Island. Um, one about video games. So it might be neat to use with your students podcast or audio files. And if you, if you want to learn more about podcasts, I really suggest listening to that session Ty did on using podcasts in the classroom. Oh, and then also, finally, I want to show you guys our website <laughs> where all these um, resources will be. Um, if you go to our homepage, tslp.org, we have um, first, we have our post-secondary Catch the Wave video. It is up in sections right now. And so you could use those with your students. And there's six videos here that we made for, you, for the students considering post-secondary education. And then, um, again, this is right on our homepage. If you click on TSLP Transition Roundup, it'll take you right to all the activities we've talked about today, all the resources. Um, and if you did um, speak out about something you're using, please send it to your transition um, liaison and um, we will get it up on our website for you guys to use. Any questions? Can't see if there was. Here we go. No, Jenny. The only comment was, I think the podcasts are a great idea. Thanks. Yes. Okay. And I think somebody, there's a question too in regard to where to find the resources that the, the uh, Wintact or, or the uh, live. What's it called? Yeah, and I put that link on there. Yeah, the, the link is on here, and this will be posted on our website. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it's the DCDT um, website is where that's yeah. at. Oh, and, go ahead. Oh, and there's a link to it on our website with the resources. So you yeah. can find it there also. Okay, and I, and I forgot to mention at the beginning that I am recording this, so this, this, will be uh, on the the recording will be on the website as well so um, just kind of an update too I think from the last time we're, we're still planning 
TSLP is still planning to host the uh, Summer Institute July 20 and 21 in Pier. Um, we're on schedule yet. Um, if things change in the next few weeks, if we decide maybe we're going to be too quick to do it, then we will let folks know. Um, you can register for, for that. That is on the website. Um, and we're still planning to go ahead with the Youth Leadership Forum. Um, we're just planning and preparing for that. Uh, if it comes to the point where we think it's not going to happen, then we will let folks know. Probably within the next few weeks, it's going to be possible. Um, does anybody else have any announcements or anything that they want to share? I was just going to mention, I've had quite a few people email or talk about they really enjoy this um, sharing session, kind of. So, you know, I don't know if we'll have any more yet this spring, but I mean, let us know if you think it would be a good idea to have one of these once a month, maybe throughout the school year. On our end, it sure doesn't take anything to put it together, really. So, I've enjoyed them, and I think a lot of teachers have also. You know, I think just to add to that, Cindy, too, is that if, if people do want to do some more of these and you want to uh, volunteer to, to jump on with us um, and share what you have, you're more than welcome. We are looking for them. So, yep. Or if you, you know, want to learn something about something, you know, maybe it's guardianship or maybe it's assistive tech. We could even bring a speaker on about that too to talk for a little bit or so. Absolutely. They um, said things will be different way, our world will be different after all this. So maybe we'll get more into the virtual end of it too. Jenny, you want to go back? Go back to that slide before I don't know if that was up long enough, but I, I wanted to comment on on the work everybody's doing. You folks are Cool, you guys are doing some really neat things. It's fun to watch and listen to what folks are sharing and how they're interacting with students. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, it's just, it's, it's unique to see what all is happening and how students are getting the information and the education they need and the time you folks are putting in to doing um, things at the school or for the, the students. Pretty unique. Mm -hmm. So thank you for what you do. Uh, with that, I want to thank you guys for joining us. And if no one has anything else, it's a little after four. So, right on time. Well, if the comments in the chat box are um, what makes the decision, I think I think everyone is commenting that they think it would be a great idea mm -hmm. to have these once a month. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jenny, do share the last slide. I just, I thought that was the coolest thing. I had to laugh so hard when I did that. So <laughs> have a good summer to all of you. Take care, everybody.